Arion Knighton, one of the most promising sprinters in the world, and before he has even turned 21, he has already won two world championship medals in the 200 meters. And currently he is ranked as the fifth fastest athlete of all time with a personal record of 19.49 seconds. Knighton has arguably been one of the greatest junior sprinters of all time, and he has truly been dominant in that division. But moving into the senior division and this 2024 Olympic cycle, Knighton has been a part of very, very strange drama, which involved a positive test for a performance-enhancing drug. Now before I go any further, I want you all to know that I did hesitate making this video. Some of you were very passionate about me covering such a topic, but ultimately I did decide to do it. But I want you all to know up front that I probably don't know that much more than the average viewer, because this situation just has a lack of detail all over the place. But I think that's actually probably the most troubling part of this whole thing. With something like this, whether an athlete gets banned or gets to stay in the sport, there is almost always a huge amount of documentation. In fact, we've read over 50 pages of various reports this year alone, so the fact that there is barely anything is definitely troubling. But to circle back to Arion Knighton's case for a second, he tested positive for trenbolone, which is actually a stimulant that mostly occurs in cattle in the United States, and if eaten in certain amounts, it can get into an athlete's system. And apparently that's what happened with Arion Knighton here, because he did test positive for trenbolone, and he apparently tested positive after eating oxtail in a bakery in Florida. Now, obviously, whenever a positive test comes out, it is almost universally nearly a career-ending kind of thing. I have seen so many times where an athlete only has a slight accusation of something that is a very light substance, and a lot of the track and field community will turn on them. So what exactly has happened with Arion Knighton since this moment of testing positive? Well, unlike most athletes, Arion Knighton has been completely cleared of any violation. In fact, they expedited his case specifically so he could compete in this year's Olympic trials, and he is actually already back running. Now, the United States Anti-Doping Agency CEO Travis Tigart, who was famous for taking down Lance Armstrong about 10 years ago, said that we did what the rules require us to do in all positive cases. We can take comfort that justice was served and transparency as required by the rules was achieved. Now, I have followed Tigart's career for the better part of two decades, and I actually remember when he took down Lance Armstrong. That was a pretty insane situation, and Lance Armstrong lost hundreds of millions of dollars pretty much overnight. So this man has done some crazy things when it comes to doping. But to say that transparency has been achieved here is just not accurate whatsoever. I just can't get behind that. Because if we look at a similar situation in the past, we can see that there is a massive disparity between what is happening now with Arion Knighton and what happened three years ago with Shelby Houlihan. Now for Houlihan's case, which was the infamous burrito case, she tested positive for nandrolone, and apparently she had a pork burrito, at least that was her defense, and they said that she did in fact violate the rules and was banned for four years. Now, I took some time to read this extremely, extremely detailed breakdown, and this is so painfully dense that it's hard to stay awake through. There's just so much scientific jargon, there's so much back and forth. I'll make sure to leave a link down below so you can see just how dense this was. But the point of bringing up Houlihan is to show how much effort the Athletics Integrity Unit actually went through to make sure that justice was served. And if we compare that to what Knighton's case brought forth, at least so far, we can see that there is about 45 pages of difference. This is the entirety of Arion Knighton's report that basically says, okay, he's cleared, signed down below. This is just not enough information right now, and perhaps I'm being a little overly skeptical. They are probably going to announce a lot more detail, as he did have a two-day trial earlier this month. But this, at the moment at least, just does not seem like enough whatsoever, and there is still so much information left to come out. The last thing I did was look up trenbolone levels and nandrolone levels when it comes to cattle. And trenbolone is a very common thing found in cattle like we mentioned. It can be found in very, very small traces or slightly higher traces, depending upon how old the cattle are. And this was actually a big part of why Arion Knighton was allowed to come back. Again, we don't know the exact levels, so we're kind of taking the US Anti-Doping Agency's word here. But basically, it made sense that there was trenbolone in the cattle, or the oxtail rather, and they cleared him. They saw that this made sense, and they saw that this was actually a likely scenario. But to circle back to Shelby Houlihan, they went through painstaking detail to really, really isolate down what the truth was. They looked at the type of cattle, which was boar, 
They looked at the type of pork and the type of levels you would typically expect. They looked at half-life deterioration. They looked at the exact food truck where she went to. They interviewed Matthew Centrowitz. They interviewed Courtney Frerichs. They interviewed a lot of the Bowerman Track Club. There was layer upon layer upon layer of extraordinary detail when it came to Houlihan's case. So the fact that there is just a massive difference does strike me as slightly troubling. Now, I'll make sure to post both of these athletes' full reviews, with Shelby Houlihan's being over 40 pages and Knighton's being two pages down below, so you can read that if you want to. But honestly, I am just left a little bit puzzled by this whole situation. I have honestly never seen a positive suspension be overturned so quickly, and it's such an opportune moment. Again, I'm not saying Knighton is guilty. I'm not saying he's outright innocent. I'm just saying that we don't have the information right now. And for those that do take the time to read these things, it makes a difference. There can be some very enlightening things to see on these extraordinarily detailed reports. Uh, but I'm going to leave it at that because this is just something that is not reported in its full entirety yet. I would love to know what you all think about the situation. I would love to know what you think about the testing and the lack of information. And also, I guess since he's running now, how do you think Knighton is going to do in this year's Olympic trials? Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.